Hey guys, T2RX6 here, back for another Transformers review. And as requested, today I'm going to take a look at Masterpiece Grimlock. And right off the bat, this guy is stunning. He is probably one of the best examples of a Masterpiece Transformer out there. And I feel real bad for anybody who wasn't able to find him when Toys R Us was carrying him, because he's just amazing. The Hot Rod is cool, but Grimlock is probably one of my favorites. Um, Right off the bat, before we look at anything, he does come with some accessories. Uh, this is his pistol. He comes with the crown. And he comes with the gun. Uh, there are some... The Japanese version comes with a little waiter's tray and such. Which is pretty cool. And he still has the peg hole for his little tie and stuff. And uh, I believe that was it for the accessories. I know there was a comic book edition. Now you'll see I have him on this little rotating stand. Actually this was part of the wedding cake topper <laughs> when my wife and I got married so I dug it out of the closet because really I think you guys can get a better effect of just all the chromed out parts and how it looks as the lights catch it on this as opposed to my hands doing anything. So now that he's spun around 360 at least once, let's go ahead and pull him on off of this thing. We'll take that away. And let's talk a little bit about the actual toy. The posability in the dinosaur mode is pretty good because like the Generation 1 Grimlock, he's standing on his arms. So he's got a ball jointed shoulder socket as well as the uh, elbow movement here. And then this can also swivel. So that gives him a pretty good range of poses. And he's pretty sturdy so you can have him sitting just like uh, he was in his Generation 1 Incarnate. Or, if you really want, you can have him hunched over, which I think is what they're saying the Tyrannosaurus Rex actually is supposed to have stood like now. I'm not really sure. I'm not on, on top of all that knowledge. For his arms here, it's on a ball joint at the shoulder up here. So you can give him... He's waving, looking all happy. And then he's got the uh, elbow swivel, not on a ball joint, so all your motion of that arm is going to be based on that shoulder. Finally, each individual finger is, uh, they're all separate, unlike most of the masterpieces. So you can actually pose them how you want. They're all just pinned uh, through all of them, but each one is posable. Now you can open and close his mouth here. Let's raise this. You can uh, open his mouth. He does have a little gimmick here that you push on this part and his jaw snaps closed. It's really not that interesting of a gimmick, but it's not that intrusive of a gimmick either. And I love all the tech detail that shows up underneath this transparent plastic here. Now, you'll notice that mine likes to move his head on his own. Well, they did also have this other gimmick where if you take his tail and you do this, his head will shake back and forth. I guess like he's walking. As you can see, mine likes to go all the way around and just keep working itself more and more until it finally gets stuck. So I don't really like that gimmick too much, but it doesn't really hurt the figure. Now, the other big thing with these guys is that the Generation 1 toys came with red eyes, but in the TV show, he was always depicted as having blue eyes. So, this is also another gimmick that was figured in, as you can lift out his head, and you just kind of pull down on the eyes and rotate them. And once they're in the right position again, can't see it from the angle I'm doing that. Helps if you put them the right way, I suppose. You can then close up his eyes, and now he's got blue eyes, so he's the friendlier, kinder Grimlock. I personally like the red eyes, and the switch is not very hard to do. That was much easier that time. So, I keep him with red. So, before we start working to get him to his uh, robot mode, oh yeah, he's also got the up and down flex uh, flexible head. And this gimmick never really works for me. You're supposed to be able to like push this and his head is supposed to go up and down as you push his legs but you can see mine doesn't really like working so I don't really worry about it it's about the same I feel as the uh, head shaking gimmick 
But let's put him to the side, and here's his actual Generation 1 counterpart, just so you can get a size comparison. And for more fun, we'll put the little world smallest there, and have a little army of uh, Grimlocks. And just to further the size comparison so nobody worries later, here is the newer style size, uh, Seeker size, MP10 size, uh, masterpiece and finally I'll put the MP01 here who is the original style masterpiece just so you can see the size differences here so let's take these away and Rodimus dropped his gun and let's get on to the transformation so the first time I transformed this guy, I realized just how truly awesome he is, and he epitomizes the what I feel is the goal of the masterpiece, which is to make an updated G1, and he does this so well that a lot of his transformation is the same as his Generation 1 counterpart, and that's pretty amazing. Uh, of course there's differences because they've made him better, but there is a lot of stuff that is very similar. So, to start this transformation, we will start by opening up, if I can get my hands on it here, someday I should take a picture of how I actually do my review so you can see why I struggle so much sometimes at certain angles. So we'll start by opening this and then just fold his head on back. If you guys saw all the lights that I'm reaching over and stuff, I think you guys would laugh. Then we just take this and we'll get this all out of the way so we can take his assembly, his chest, and put it back like this. And you kind of have to do what you want with the hands there in the way, but they were in Generation 1 also. So just figure out what you want to do. Then you can take this and kind of rotate it on up. And you'll see that there's this tab here. You're going to rotate his assembly up and then it's going to slide straight down and that tab is actually going to reveal an Autobot logo on his chest. If I can get it all to sit correct. Oh, we gotta push it up from the bottom. I forgot. All right, let's work on the tail here. So, again, just like the Generation 1 version, we just split his tail in half. And then this is where things get interesting as we form his legs. So kind of take it out to the side and you should see that his, his hips will form with it. And you'll have this awful looking mess. Then what you're going to do is you're going to fold in his little end piece of his tail here. And then bring his leg around so his knee joint is made there. And with this piece you're going to have to grab it like this, fold it back. Flip that on up and it's going to lock into the front there. And then you can take this and you can flip that around then take that and then fold that up. You can see how it's going to make his leg. Sorry about that guys. It's been a while since I did the leg. I couldn't remember. And then you take this and you just kind of fold it on down and in to make the very bottom of his foot. So now you got one big massive boot there. And I'll show you that again on this side here. So you take, let's see how I can do this. You take this, you flip that on in, you flip that around, get his knee adjusted, flip it, flip it, and flip it and there you go you got his leg and as you bring his toe piece down you'll see it'll actually move part of the leg panel with it so now that you got that you can go ahead and get his knees the right direction here and he's got some nice big beefy ratchets this guy's heavy on my arms <laughs> so you take that and you kind of make his knees look the right way so we got that and now he, he looks like he's ready to rock the way we got him partying out 
So, just adjust the waist piece so it looks right. Bring that down, and we're done with the bottom. Now, all you're gonna do is flip this on up, and then the whole assembly will slide in, and you'll see when you've done it right, as you can see, there's no Autobot symbol, and as you plug it in, if you connected it right, you got the Autobot symbol. You know what, I'm gonna include a picture at the end of this review, so you can see what I'm working with. All right, so we got that. The final thing we have to do is we gotta open up this little side panel and rotate around his fist, which isn't always the easiest thing to do. And then close it on up. And you can do whatever you want uh, with his, his feet here you can leave them up well you can't really do whatever you want you can't fold them forward but or backwards I should say but you can fold them forward like that I usually just leave them up because of the sword and stuff it's really up to you what you want to do and we'll do it again for the other arm here open it Alright, this one is struggling, so let me cut for a second so I can get this out. Alright guys, sorry about that. That one was real tough to get out. Um, mostly because this hand, unlike his other hand, is uh, somewhat poseable. The only one that has independent is the, the uh, pointer finger. And you got his thumb. And there you go. You've got Masterpiece Grimlock. He just looks fantastic, if you can get him posed right. And he does have some back kibble, but again, that's the Generation 1 toy right there. So it's not really that big of a deal. You do have to find what you want to do best with these little hands here. I prefer to just kind of keep them out like that a little. But you got just a real nice version of Grimlock. And I love the, how the Autobot symbol doesn't show up until you plug everything in. So let's take a close look at his head up here. And you can see they just real nicely captured the Grimlock look. And he also has gimmicks in this mode. And again, they're not very intrusive here. For instance, on the back here, you'll see that there is a little red lever here. So when I take that red lever and I pull it down, very much like the Human Alliance toys, you now have a blue-eyed Grimlock. So whichever one you like better. Let's zoom on out here. The only other gimmick in this mode is related to his arm here. And let's see, if you look here, there's a red LED in there. And that's activated by pushing a switch on his shoulder here. And that lights up his LED. And what that's used for is his weaponry. Um, obviously the sword is clear and the tips of the gun are clear. And you'll see that the pegs for each of them are clear. So when you put them in, we'll see if it's going to show up. Not at all. Let me turn off some lights. Going dark. It's not a terribly impressive, you know, display on the arms. It actually looks a lot better on camera than it does in person. It's a very faint red. That's about what I'm seeing in person. The sword is much more impressive. Whoops. And that really does light up pretty nicely in the dark with that LED. But enough of being in the dark. Let's mess with the white balance on this camera and put these lights back on. Now, I do like him with his sword the best. Um, the gun is okay, but I don't really use it very much. This posable hand, none of the weapons are really designed to go in there. Um, you could fit them in, you'd have to play around with it. 
but since they're just a, a peg hole, you're gonna have to mess with it a little bit to get the, the, the right grip on it. This other hand, the only thing that's posable on it is this little thumb, which I hardly ever mess around with. I always forget it's there and just kind of leave it tucked in. And everything else is just molded in that like very traditional fist. For articulation, and as you saw earlier, he does have a good shoulder. Uh, he does get a full range of motion out of there, just it will hang on his backpack a little bit. And you've got the swivel here for the bicep, and you got the elbow joint, and you got the wrist swivel. His head is on a nice ball joint that gives him plenty of posability. And then when it comes to his legs, oh, he does have a waist first off. It's not a great waist, it just gives you a little bit of movement, uh, mostly because it gets hung up on his little cod piece thing. But it's good enough to get what you need done. On uh, the legs, the skirt armor moves. He does have the side in and out. Uh, it is got a swivel uh, right at the crotch there. And this looks like it swivels up here, but it doesn't. It's just a solid piece, uh, just so you know. You do have the jointed knee, which is on a ratchet, so it's pretty capable of uh, holding its position. That's about as much as you're going to get on the knee, though. Um, it can bend backwards if you really want it to. I don't know why. Um, based on how his legs transform, though, you can get a nice lean on the leg. Uh, which does work well to uh, get his foot on one of those sli slightly slanted poses. You don't get much side to side on the actual foot though, so you do kind of need that that waist lean. And I'm popping everything apart up at the top while I'm trying to show this lower body articulation. There we go. Um, toe, again, it's just a little bit of forward and back. Um, tiny bit of side to side that you can pull off of it but I don't think the joint is really supposed to be doing that too much so I wouldn't overdo it uh, I'm not sure what's holding that in place so he's a pretty good posable figure and he's definitely one of my favorite masterpieces and we might as well show his final accessory here and that is his crown and that just fits right on top of his head and just makes him look incredibly awesome so real quick again let's do the size comparisons and I've got the generation one and the big problem with the generation one is just how far back his head is and you can see they took what they learned and made this one just great you've also got the world's smallest down here And since I had them on the shelf, I didn't really feel like transforming them for the dinosaur mode. There is Classics. That is actually the Hen K, which is why he has the chrome on him. And we'll bring Rodimus. You can see that he is a little bit small for a masterpiece because you kind of would expect him to be the same size or larger than Rodimus. But it's okay. The big gripe came when you brought MP10 in. And just how much bigger NC-10 is than Grimlock, who is always portrayed as just huge compared to Optimus. And the same thing is going to happen with the... Uh, I'm sorry, that's MP-01. Uh, what I was trying to say is the MP-10, which is the same size as Rodimus, um, is going to be the same height as Grimlock, which does make Grimlock feel a bit small. Um, I know some people like to use this Grimlock on their classic shelf. I've always felt he's a little bit too big for the classic shelf, so I just use my classic Grimlock. But this is T2RX6. I hope you guys enjoyed the review and found it informative. And I'm glad I finally could get this done. So if you have any questions or comments or any other requests of anything you've seen in my review or maybe hope I have and would like to see a review of, feel free to let me know. And I'll see you guys next week. All right, guys. So some bonus content. I do all my filming in my bedroom. There's my dog Chase. Hey Chase. Says hi. 
This is my nightstand. My stack of comics. And then a couple Transformers. My messy bed for all the stuff I moved for the review. Just to show this, much to my wife's displeasure, I got a whole little shelf of Transformers on my, uh, where I keep my clothes. All kinds of stuff going on here from every possible line, just a mix match of stuff. And where the magic happens here, that is where I do all my reviews. In fact, you can see a couple things that I've reviewed before, or things that I've taken pictures of, or things that have yet to be reviewed. And, of course, Masterpiece Grimlock, just as you last saw him a second ago. You can see the gap that I have to work with. So, usually, I'm sitting behind the camera, looking like this, and you guys are seeing something like this on the camera. And that is usually pretty much a full arms extension for me. So if it looks like I'm struggling, it's because I am holding the transformer at arm's reach from my face. And that's a little bit difficult. But just wanted to show you guys that so you could see what I'm working with. And I'll see you next week.